Let's now look at the electrical and timing characteristics and how they are shown in the I2C specification. We won't go into detail about each of the specifications, but we'll give an overview. Manufacturer's datasheets for I2C will have details needed to operate I2C devices. However, you can search out the I2C specifications and read more about each of these characteristics. As an example, here we show a table from the I2C specifications. This table shows the input-output characteristics for the I2C bus lines, that is of SCL and SDA lines. First, you can see from the columns that the specifications are different for different I2C speed modes. Minimums and maximums are listed for standard mode, fast mode. Because the devices operate at different speeds, these specifications are different to accommodate the differences in voltage and timing. Some of the interesting parameters to watch out in the table is as follows. The table gives specifications for low-level and high-level input and output voltages for SCL and SDA. This ensures that each I2C bus line has a voltage range that correctly transmits and receives high and low levels. The Schmidt Trigger Input Hysteresis, VHYS, helps in filtering out any spurious noise on the I2C bus and prevents input buffers from any false trigger. Since the I2C standard allows sharing a common I2C bus with mixed I2C mode devices, a hysteresis specification of 0.05 multiplies into VDD is sufficient and will meet the requirement of all I2C slave devices. A 10% hysteresis may be only needed when the device operates at a lower operating voltage, VDD less than 2.0V, because, at a lower power supply, 5% hysteresis may not be able to provide sufficient noise margin to filter out all unwanted noise components. TOF or TF, min, minimum output fall time. This specification has no effect on the I2C protocol functionality. A faster edge rate of TOF or TF, output fall time smaller than its minimum spec, may solely affect the EMI on boards where the I2C signals are the fastest switching signals. Next. The table of the I2C specification gives additional minimums and maximums for the SDA and SCL bus timing. The first key parameter gives the maximum SCL clock frequency for each of the I2C speed modes the rest of the table gives various setup and hold times for the SDA in relation to SCL, there is also timing information for the start and stop conditions. One key parameter shows the maximum capacitive load allowed onto I2C bus lines. With the high signals based on pull-up resistances, the load capacitance may determine the speed at which the I2C bus communicates. Rise, TR, and fall, TF, times. TR is defined as the amount of time taken by the rising edge to reach 70% amplitude from 30% amplitude for either SDA and SCL, while TF is defined as the amount of time taken by the falling edge to reach 30% amplitude from an amplitude of 70%. Setup and hold time for start condition. Recall that the start condition is defined as when the SDA line goes low before SCL transitions low, that is SDA transitions to a low state when the SCL line is high. Hold time for start condition, THD, STA, is the minimum time the data should be low before SCL goes low. It is measured as the time taken from 30% amplitude of SDA from a high to low transition to 70% of the amplitude of SCL from a high to low transition. Setup time for a start condition, TSU, STA, is a timing specification that is only taken into account during a repeated start condition. It is the minimum time the SDA line is required to remain high before initiating a repeated start. This is measured as the time interval between 70% amplitude of SCL from a low to high transition and 70% amplitude of SDA from a high to low transition. Setup for stop condition. In a stop condition SDA transitions to a high state after the SCL transitions high. There is no hold time requirement for a stop condition, however, a minimum setup time is still necessary. Setup time for stop condition, TSU, STO, is measured as the time between 70% amplitude of the rising edge of SCL and 30% amplitude of a rising SDA signal during a stop condition. Setup time for data, TSU, DAT. 
Similarly, there is a setup time for data, which is defined as the minimum amount of time required for SDA to have reached a stable level before an SCL transition takes place. This is measured between 30% amplitude of SDA during a falling edge or 70% amplitude of SDA during a rising edge and 30% amplitude of SCL during a rising edge. Buffer time, T-buff. Buffer time specifies the bus free time between stop and start conditions. This time period allows other devices on the bus to detect a free bus and attempt to transmit data. Slave devices often specify this as a minimum required bus free time. If a master, previously communicating with another device, attempts to address a slave device without letting the elapsed buffer time pass between its stop and start condition, the slave device may not be able to differentiate the new start condition as a separate transaction and might not respond. The data sheets will give enough of these characteristics to set up the device correctly. An example of the electrical timing parameters is shown below. TF is the fall time of the SCL and SDA lines. TR is the rise time of the SCL and SDA lines. TLO is the low period of the SCL clock. The electrical characteristic of HS mode is shown below. Coming to the capacitive load, timing parameters are independent for capacitive load up to 100 PF for each bus line allowing the maximum possible bit rate of 3.4 megabits per second. At a higher capacitive load on the bus lines, the bit rate decreases gradually.